Okay, I am having some issue with my drawing tools, but that's okay. Let me use only the mouse today. Welcome to my weekly market meetup using live systems, 28 August, 2019. I'm Sagar I'm the designer and developer of Q trading systems and techniques retired IT professional, work mostly in Singapore, currently living in Thailand. I mostly trade stocks, sometimes stock options, with short-term or swing trading in mind. Before I begin, let me go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, I will review the global as well as the USA market and then look for trading opportunities using live market. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me continue with live system. I have downloaded the data using downloader. Therefore, for global markets, I will use the downloaded data. That will be faster. We start our global market analysis with AXJO. We are using the at a glance template left hand side weekly backdrop chart template and right hand side daily entry or hop on chart template together i call this at a glance template because using this template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds in the weekly chart axjo drop the backdrop candle color is still magenta. This week's candle shape as of today, Wednesday, is bullish because it has a long lower tail. In the daily chart, price drop, it stabilized near the memory support line, displayed a bullish headwind signal one day ago and today went up a little bit. This bullish headwind signal that came one day ago, did it give a bullish headwind long trade setup? No, it didn't give that setup because the weekly was still magenta in color at that time. Today, the shape is looking more bullish in the weekly chart, but yesterday the shape was probably indecisive, not bullish. Therefore, if you had a short position in AXJO earlier, looking at the bullish headwind, you might protect profit in the short position or close the position with profit. You may not enter a long position in AXJO. It is at the lower boundary. It is also near the memory support. We are not going to take any long trade in AXJO right now. Neither are we going to take any short trade. Let's look at the China market, CSI 300. In the weekly chart, price came to the memory resistance line. When it comes to the memory resistance line, we expect it to pause for a while. Sometimes it may drop also, but at minimum, we expect price to pause. 
it came near the memory resistance one week ago and this week till Wednesday market close it has not been able to break out of the memory resistance in the daily it is inside a triangle pattern at the higher end of the triangle pattern near the memory resistance we are not going to take any long trade now unless it can break out of this memory resistance near 3850 we will not take any short trade also because the weekly is bullish in color that is no q trade setup in china market it is moving without any clear direction because it is inside a triangle pattern in the daily chart AXJO dropped and stabilized China market inside a triangle pattern in the daily chart. Let's look at the Hong Kong market. Hang Seng index. This is weaker than the China market. In the weekly price drop, this week's candle color is bearish magenta the shape is somewhat indecisive it has a hollow body that is bullish upper tail that is bearish and it opened with a gap down still significantly below previous week's close so we have to say it is indecisive in the daily it had a sharp drop around this point then on this day it initially gapped down heavily but then recovered regain this watermark support level that probably was the time one could take a very low risk long trade not a directional long trade but extreme reversal long trade if options were liquid in Hang Seng index one could take a short put vertical and try to book profit quickly that is if somebody took such a trade it would probably be using the intraday time frame in q systems and techniques we have four standard trade setups those are using daily chart interval we didn't have any of those standard trade setups in hang Seng index on this day there was a stretch release bull release signal it did regain this watermark support probably it came very close to this watermark support might have touched that also let me check almost touched this watermark support probably touched it and then next day it gave a bull release signal it met all the requirements of a box long trade in the daily chart but in the weekly it didn't meet the requirement for box long trade setup that is a setup for sideways market or at double bottom or top it was near a double bottom at that time very long term watermark support level it came there it gave us a bull release signal this is an index it had heavy activity around that same price level that requirement was also made however box trade setup has a requirement that the weekly has to be yellow color that was probably not true I can see this week ended with a magenta color candle therefore at the bottom it was also magenta therefore we didn't have any box trade setup that is how you can apply the unambiguous checklists on any chart and decide if there is a low risk entry opportunity the unambiguous checklists are available on the home page superiorprofit.co from the trade setup menu we have the four trade setups go with flow for trend following headwind for reversing market box for sideways market or double top double bottom bounce for exhaustion based market only one trade setup for each of the four possible market conditions they help you decide when to take a trade and they also help you decide when to exit a trade For example, when the bullish headwind comes, you would normally exit or protect profit in a short position, like we saw in CSI, like we saw in XJO. At the right edge, Hang Seng Index gave a 
bearish shape, bearish color candle in the daily chart. Weekly is also bearish color. However, it is too close to the lower boundary. We are not going to take any new short trade. And there is no long trade setup. India market was weak for a while. Let's see how it is now. Take it from the local symbol. After displaying the bearish headwind in the weekly and daily, it dropped a lot. In the weekly chart, it is now going sideways for one, two, three, four, five. Currently it is in the fifth week, it is going sideways. When an instrument starts to move sideways for one week, two week, three week, four week, and five week, then if you had any existing position, in this case, that would be a short position, then you would exit that position with profit. You could take the short trade I mentioned in previous webinars on this day. I had mentioned it at that time. That was a go with flow trend following short trade setup on this magenta candle. If you use the Q protection trailing stop, you would exit on this candle. If you use another kind of protection, for example, setting the stop at the high of the recent swing high so your initial stop would be at this point next stop will be at this point then it came here made another lower high your stop would be just above this white color candle white color direction line just here the white direction line is not heat yet you may continue to hold the stop with that level that means you can use trailing stop in different ways. One way is to use the Q protection signal. When price goes down in a short trade, you apply the trailing stop using the cyan color protection signal. And the other way is to wait for the instrument to make a lower high for a short trade lower high and then move stop there so your stop will be here let me try to draw a line initially the stop will be here when the profit is booked on partial position at this lower boundary initial target then we'll wait we'll not move the stop immediately until it creates a lower high and at that point from the initial stop we would move the stop to trailing stop then price was going down you would wait again for price to make a new lower high at this point and then move stop here. That would be just at the white direction line. That is not hit yet. It is okay to wait for that to be hit maybe tomorrow. If it does so, you will exit the position. And if it continues to go down, then you will continue to maintain partial position, letting profit run. Those are the two ways you may apply trailing stop on swing trades. Those techniques are actually mentioned in the YouTube channel. Long time ago, I made some videos. If we go to my YouTube channel, then one of the categories is tutorial. Under tutorial, there is a video, how to use superior profit hop off template. Then another one, how to use superior profit hop on or entry template. How to use sonar, etc. This hop off template video explains the two techniques that I described just now. India market is going sideways as you can see from the weekly chart for many weeks. Therefore, we are not going to enter any new trade now. And here I differ a little bit from some other techniques. In my view, congestion areas, sideways move areas are target areas, not 
entry areas. In the queue technique, the entry areas are always at extremes. Sometimes at extreme extreme, like this very scheduling at the very top, or in the daily chart also very scheduling at the very top, at extreme high or low, and sometimes at swing high or low, like the go with flow trade. But in any case, it is at a local low or longer term low or high, not in a range bound area. So this area, the current area for NSEI, India's Nifty 50 index, is a congestion area that is not an entry area in Q technique. Congestion areas are only exit areas. There is a possibility to take a breakout trade. However, as you saw just now in Q technique, we defi didn't define any standard breakout trade setup. Many of the breakouts tend to be fake breakouts or they don't give optimal entry point. What I mean by optimal entry point, if we are looking for a breakout trade from this congestion area, let me draw the range, let's say this range. By the time price breaks out on a closing basis from the higher end, for example, 11200. It may close somewhere around 11300 or 11350. Then the stop loss will be very far. Assuming the stop loss is at the local low, that will be very far. That's why I didn't try to define any breakout trade setup. We have a breakout scan. In Explore, we have the short breakout scan and long breakout scan. We can easily identify breakouts, but we don't take the breakout trade unless the breakout results in a low risk entry point. Sometimes breakouts may result in a low risk entry point. In this case, it will not result in a low risk entry point if it breaks out of 11200 because by the time it closes, it will close around 11300 or higher. That is too far from the recent low. A better way is for let price come back. So let it break out, go to maybe 11350, come back a little bit, maybe to 11250, and then go up again, creating a higher low. That will be a trend following go with flow trade setup. That will be a lower risk entry. And in Q technique, we always try to take lower risk entry. The secret of successful trading, few secrets. One is, as I say, don't listen to news. Or if you are able to listen to news but not let it impact your decision, then fine. In the recent weeks, maybe months, people are saying that market is moving up, down, up, down because of tweet. If you think about it, the people say the same thing for years and years. Every day, market is moving based on news. It appears like that if I am watching news, listening news too much. If I don't listen to news, then I will not feel that market is moved by tweets. I'll just look at the chart and then it will be much easier for you to trade. For example, in Nifty, you will see it is moving sideways. You will not take a trade. Not difficult to decide that. Now, if I look at Indian news, I may be influenced. Wow, that is happening. Wow, that is happening. This is happening and whatnot. The same is true for USA market also. That is one secret, not listen to news. The other one is keep the risk small. Always, always manage risk first. Always manage risk first. Profit will come. The Q trade setups are high probability trade setups. So long as we manage risk, that is manage position sizing also, not only the stop loss level, position sizing, then you will make profit. And you are able to find out both long and short trade in almost any market condition. I share such ideas regularly, both in the Twitter page and also in the traders forum. And you will notice sometimes I share more short trades in last couple of weeks. It was like that. So that must be because I was more bearish than bullish. But that doesn't mean I didn't share any long trade setup. 
if we look at Twitter, you will see that I did share one thread here. This trade has more than 99.5% probability of profit and the 70% probability of hitting 50% of max profit on Cincinnati Bell. That was a long position. I will look at the trade later, the idea later. Let me go through the FTSE market and then USA market first, FTSE, open from the local symbol. Here, price drop for several weeks. The weekly backdrop color is still bearish. Shape is indecisive. In the daily, it created a bullish headwind at this point. Again, this bullish headwind probably didn't give us any long trade setup if we applied the checklist conditions. However, if we had a short position taken earlier, if we had such a short trade, we would apply trailing stop on the remaining position. Now there is no trade setup. If price goes up from here, you may keep an eye for a possible box trade setup because price came to multiple watermark support levels. If it gives a bull release signal tomorrow, maybe tomorrow or Friday, if it gives a bull release signal and the weekly color changes to yellow, then it will meet all the checklist conditions for the box long trade setup at double bottom, in this case, multiple bottom. Right now, there is no long trade setup and it is to extend it to the downside near lower boundary. We are not going to short it now. Next possible trade may be more in the long direction. Now let's have a look at the USA market. We can look at the USA market using the market ETFs, S&P 500 ETF. In the weekly chart, it is moving sideways, isn't it, for four weeks. It is supported by memory support. If you watched my previous market roundup, then you would know that I mentioned if the memory support was broken, then I would start taking more short trades. At that time, I mentioned I was bearish on this day, on this week. At the close of this week, I mentioned I am bearish, but I am not going to take any new short trade because it is at memory support. That was a very wise decision, effective decision. Again, I was not basing my decision based on who is tweeting what, what is happening in G7 meeting, what is being said by which president. Based on the chart, and for stocks, I look at fundamentals industries also, but this is market ETF. Based on the chart, it was not difficult to make the decision that though I was bearish, I was not going to short. That was a good decision because now in the daily chart, we see it is moving in a range inside a triangle pattern. There were many signals not to continue taking short trade. Many people were bearish, isn't it, on this day, Friday, that was last Friday but there was a bullish headwind in the daily chart. There was memory support in weekly, memory support in daily. So I was not going to take any short trade, though I said my market outlook was overall bearish. That was based on market analysis, market breadth analysis, sector industry analysis, everything. QQQ also had memory support. That memory support is still holding, daily is still loading in the weekly. We can see again, it's very clear why I mentioned that my outlook was bearish previous week based on this weekly bar, bearish shape, bearish color, but it had memory support, so I was not going to take any short trade. In the daily, it is inside the triangle pattern also. Daya also had memory support because it had 
three of the ETF said memory support. I was not going to short at end of Friday. In the daily, it is inside a triangle pattern, weekly is moving sideways for four weeks. Again, areas are not entry points in QTEC. IWM was weakest and it is remaining the weakest. I mentioned in the market roundup also, it has memory resistance in the daily. Doesn't have any memory support nearby. Next memory support is far away, far away. However, there is watermark support. It's also in a kind of triangle pattern bound by watermark support and memory resistance. Looking back, now it seems simple, isn't it? That during the weekend, I could quite easily and confidently decide that though I was bearish, I was not going to take new short trade. Not difficult if we don't listen to news. Now the market view based on the four market ETFs that it is moving sideways. Then which direction trade do I take? <laughs> Maybe it's better to stay away from the market. Not try to take new trades right now. Let the market decide the direction. That is how I trade. I try to align forces from market, sector, industry, fundamental, technical level. That can be done in only a few minutes. Doesn't take long time. In the weekend market roundup, I said I was not going to take any short trade. Now I am of the view because it is moving sideways for four weeks based on the weekly chart. I am not going to take any new directional trade. Let the direction be clearer. Having said that, let me try to find some trades for the webinar. Though we may not consider taking any new trade. Let's look for stocks that may be giving a buy setup. And I am going to run it on a list of stocks in the USA market that has liquid options, 324 stocks, one explorer, use the current exchange date time on the daily interval, run the explorer. Let it run. While it is running, let us have a look at the global indices using the graphical form. Let's look at AXJO. AXJO over last five days, we can see it is balanced. 58% up, 40% down Australia market. Today it is more up than down. Today 113 stocks are up, 57 down. And we can see the transition over two day period, five day period, 10 day period. You can see from 88 up to 116 up to 144 up to 133 up. So it turns slightly bullish. This is a market breadth information that we cannot get from looking at the charts only. Let's look at the China market. No data is stored in my computer. Every time I'm selecting a global index, it is contacting definitive and then getting the data, all the constituent stocks, then getting detailed data on all of them, calculating the graphs and also more detailed vital statistics. Here also it is balanced, slightly more bearish than bullish. Over five days it is balanced, we can say. 
today slightly more bearish than bullish. Let's look at Dow Jones Industrial Average, all using real time data. Over five days, bearish, today opposite, bullish. Instantly we can see that. Today is bullish in terms of market breadth. What about NASDAQ? I think it will be more or less same for all of them. In the USA market, the three Indices, Dow Jones Industrial Average, NASDAQ, and S&P 500, they tend to move together. Russell 2000 also moves more or less together. Similar picture, over five day period, it is three quarter bearish, over one day, three quarter bullish using real time data. So if we are going to take a new trade, probably we we'll look for bullish trade, isn't it? It's moving in a congested area, sideways area. Best decision probably is not to take a trade, but if somebody is still thinking of looking for a trade setup, it is better to look for a buy trade setup because today 75% stocks are up. That is why I ran the scan for buy it off, buy it up. And in Metastock, Q Global, there was no radar facility. So I'm working on something that is even better than the radar facility that is available in Trade Station. In Trade Station, you know, in Q Elite, we have a radar where we can drop any symbol and it will calculate different Q signals including the trade setups like headwind, box, go with flow, bounce, and some other signals that you can use to make trading decisions like breakouts, U-turn pressure, etc. There was no such facility in Metastock, but I use Metastock for global markets. So I developed a tool and in a way it is better. I have to transfer the data from Q Global Explorer to this trade finder tool. I shared a snapshot of it earlier in Twitter, but now I can get more detail than it is available in QLIT radar. Here I see that 254 symbols are selected today from the scan by if up. And I ran it on a symbol of 324 stocks, the other stocks didn't go up. That's why they are not appearing. If we look at the legion, then red is today. I'm following the, is it to remember, color coding RGB, red, green, blue color scheme. So red is today, green is yesterday, blue is this week, yellow is previous week. I think this week and previous week, if any signal has come, that is enough for us to know and then some cumulative data, which is appearing here. Now, if I'm looking for, let's say breakout appearing today, I can double click on the breakout column and if double click is not working for some reason, I can sort. These are red color, so these are breaking out today. Out of that, I can see one stock, F1 products, it had a bullish pressure because I ran the scan on buy it, buy if up scan. So all these are bullish. So yesterday it had a bullish pressure. I don't see any pressure, high pressure this week from these two columns or U turn. So this one immediately catches the eye. Now, if I look at the entire row, Avon products has a breakout today. Yesterday, it had high bullish pressure. 
yesterday it also gave green is yesterday from the legend we know yesterday it also gave a flow color bullish that is go with flow possible long trade setup trend following it had a pullback possible trade setup pullback means it was going up came back to direction lines yellow or white direction line pull back to support and went up again that happened yesterday blue color means this week so it touched some memory support this week and the numbers shows how many days ago so two days ago it also had a bounce yesterday so two days ago it touched the memory and yesterday it had a bounce setup probably it went up from the same memory that it touched it also pulled back to memory support yesterday not memory pulled back to direction support and went up gave a go with flow signal yesterday high pressure yesterday today breaking out of memory resistance it also had a box setup yesterday so it means it gave a bull release signal yesterday even before opening the chart i can gather a lot of insight from this single row that it was inside a triangle pattern it had a memory support which it touched then it bounced from and today it is breaking out of the memory resistance so it was inside a triangle pattern today it is breaking out with high pressure this is q trade finder where we get even more detail very powerful inside more detail more insight i should say not just detail more insight than is available from q elite trade station because here we have data only based on current date we cannot have the data of previous week yesterday etc which we can find from trade finder now i can open them directly and i am loving this too click the chart icon it will open avon products using the template default template that i had set which was the at a glance weekly daily template weekly is loading when i'm running the webinar sometimes it takes a while but let's look at the daily chart it touched the memory two days ago on this day yesterday it bounced up today it is breaking out this is the bullish pressure it came yesterday it had a go with flow that is cyan color signal cyan color candle yesterday it came to support yellow direction line pull back to support and went up yesterday relative performance is up weekly also has a very long term support this is the setup that people sometimes refer to as pull back to support going up and in this case going up with heavy pressure all the signals came yesterday however there was a memory resistance so one would not take the long trade yesterday you might wait for today and then enter when you see the price is going up above the memory resistance that is the technical analysis let's look at the stocks fundamental and i can click the peer analysis it will integrate connect connect with the peer analysis tool retrieving all the peers and then retrieving data on the peers and calculating vital statistics is going to populate the snapshot area here it has done it i can see the valuation is not undervalued earnings quality is very high it has short squeeze potential though the valuation is not undervalued it has excellent earnings growth in q technique i suggest buying a stock either based on valuation or based on growth this is a stock that we can buy based on very high earnings growth in the latest quarter so that is looking good what about its industry it belongs to personal products industry consumer staples all the tools are integrated i am going to click the find industry button 
and instantly I come to the industry rotation analysis tool which shows that personal products industry is improving it was magenta earlier now cyan therefore it is improving so we started with a scan in Q Global. Analyze the data based on Trade Finder. Avon products looked interesting because it is breaking out today and it gave a lot of signals this week. The summary column show that today it has one signal that is the breakout. Over two days it has six signals and over two weeks it has seven signals. Sometimes you may sort based on the number of signals a stock is giving over a week. So we could do that and now we can see there are multiple signals that are giving actually many signal many stocks are giving more than four by signals so from here to here and now before looking at their charts we could look at their fundamentals by clicking the peer analysis button that will transfer all the stocks not necessarily in the same industry certainly not in the same industry we can look at their fundamentals and then find look at their industry and chart. So I'm updating the data. Let's look at the vital statistics. We could look for optimal valuation stocks, GME, Celgene, and Facebook, or we could look for stocks that are having good earnings growth in the latest quarter. That is JD, AVP, and Selgen. We already looked at AVP. Selgen is a stock, CELG, that is having great valuation and also it is having improving earnings growth. Instantly, we can recognize that. This is in which industry? It is in biotech. So let me do a PR analysis of Selgen. Currently, I'm looking at stocks from different industries, all these industries. I should compare Celgene only with biotech stock. So I can redo the peer analysis by clicking this button. Now it is going to use Celgene as a root stock. Getting information about the root stock, updated already. We have the snapshot information, what Celgene does, etc retrieve the peer stocks and third step it is retrieving detailed data of the peer stocks and calculating vital statistics once it populates the snapshot then we know all the data calculation is done valuation is great improving earnings growth in quarterly period steady earnings growth over yearly periods also steady revenue growth both over quarterly as well as yearly periods. Fundamentally, it's looking great. Let's look at the industry. Interesting, isn't it? Instantly, we can see this is also an industry that was weaker earlier and improving. One day representing today's data. It is improving. So fundamentals looking great. Industry improving. Let's look at the chart. We could close the previous chart. Go to peers, click the chart icon. It is going up in the weekly chart. Regain the yellow direction line in the weekly chart. Now the backdrop candle color is Cyan this week had a gap up open. It is holding on to that price level. The gap up open happened on Monday. That was an indecisive shape candle. That time it broke out of the watermark resistance. We didn't define any breakout trade setup. Remember, we were not going to take a breakout trade. Now, if price goes above the high of this gap up day, above 98.5 one probably let's see the high 98.1 lucky me <laughs> i wish my lottery numbers were so accurate 
just above say 98.2 if it goes above 98.2 then one might take a trade based on the principle of going above the gap up day in a stock that is overall bullish you can see relative performance is also bullish the industry is improving and great fundamentals in that case the stop will be just above the recent low which is just below the this can kind of today's low actually if it continues to go up if it doesn't go above 98.2 then you might not take any long trade another possibility is if we have good luck and sometimes drop in price is a good luck the stocks fundamental is great if it comes back to one of these memory support lines the yellow direction line is also there around 94.5 by the time it comes here the lines will tilt up a little bit if it comes to 94 0.595 and tilts up that may give us a low risk swing long entry using go with flow trade setup just like we had on this candle this cyan candle gave us a trend following long trade setup i can see weekly was cyan for many weeks therefore when this cyan color candle came in the daily we had a go with flow long trade setup when it hit the upper boundary we could already book partial profit and we can continue to hold remaining position if it again comes to the 95 94.5 area goes up gives a sign candle again that will be the next trend following long trade setup or you may try to buy it as a breakout above the gap up candle those are different ways you can identify trade setups and it did it feel difficult for me because i was not looking at who is tweeting what The analysis that we can carry out using Q Global now is very powerful in combination with the industry rotation analysis, peer analysis, and also the straight finder tool. Let's look at the industries before I end. Let's update the latest data. Today, 10 sectors are up. As of now, 12, around 12, 30, 22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, energy is very strong today. Energy was one of the weakest for a long time. If we look at the heat map, short over five days, we can see energy was the weakest. Today, it is the strongest. It may give some very attractive lucrative buying opportunities at the very bottom and you can see that in real time how the sectors are shifting from strength to weakness or weakness to strength let me drill down into the energy sector the industries were also weak for a long time and you can see several of them one two three four five they are very strong today we are not going to buy just because the industry is strong. We will like to have a trade setup. We can look at all the underlying stocks in all these strong energy industries, short by one day performance, all in real time. We can see many stocks are going up. Let's look at the stocks that are going up by at least 4% as of now focus on only them further filter for undervalued stocks because these industries were weak for a long time we are sure to find many undervalued stocks and then further look for improving earnings growth we have two stocks up by more than four and more than five percent let me look at them with Q Global. B C E I. And instantly we can decide based on the weekly daily. Weekly is compressed. Let me magnify a little bit. Weekly is bullish. Daily has given a sand color candle as of now after creating a higher high, higher low. 
so technically it is giving a trend following long trade setup in q technique all the trade setups are trying to catch a low for buy trade always catching a low sometimes extreme low using the headwind signal or the box setup using the bull release signal and swing low for the go with flow trend following trade setup and it was not difficult isn't it i just drill down from sector to industry to fundamental and then to technicals to identify a possible trade setup in bcei the signal has to be confirmed just before market close we don't have to wait till tomorrow what was the other stock this is also looking interesting isn't it instantly we can decide it created you can say high now creating a higher low and giving us a cyan color candle it is also breaking out of memory resistance the memories provide powerful resistance therefore breaking out of a memory is also significant relative performance is strong weekly is not cyan therefore it is not giving me a go with for a long trade setup if i apply the unambiguous checklist however i am probably okay to buy the stock based on a breakout and i mentioned sometimes breakout may give low risk entry opportunity this is exactly such a case ar so we found possible to buy setups in energy sector that was weak for a long time that was carrying out a top down analysis and earlier i carried out a bottom up analysis using sonar scan and trade finder there are many other ways you can find trade setups always you will end up with very low risk and high probability trades and you will not be confused in deciding the trades because they are not based on tweets or message news etc based on unambiguous checklist unambiguous trade setups unambiguous trade signals all the q trade signals are also unambiguous either the candle color is bullish or bearish or neutral either these dots are bullish or bearish or neutral there is no scope of deciding one way or another way like you might do if you use indicators that had threshold values then you could play around with thresholds or indicators that need parameters we don't need we don't even need to look at convergence divergence then you probably know all that <laughs> but it is good to repeat sometimes let me end to the session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in my next session have a great week and trade profitably